some other time. For today, we're going to talk about ESLint. That's what I want to talk about and how you can get it figure or integrated with um, with WebDriver IO. So ESLint, if you haven't seen it, it's a linting utility for JavaScript um, and it's pretty nice. Uh, it has a lot of configurability to it and uh, lots of places use it, just tons and tons of places do it. And so what it does is it looks through your JavaScript code and makes sure that you don't have any syntax errors or that you're um, following a certain type of um, style when you're writing your code. So next thing I'm going to do is get my uh, thing in place. I'm going to go out of here. I'm going to make a new directory called WebDriver on Wednesdays ESLint. Jump into there. And um, you know what? I have a quieter keyboard. I wonder if I should switch over to that. Um, yes, I'll be right back. Sorry, it's totally worth it because it's this cool keyboard that I got on sale and um, it's much quieter. So hopefully you won't have to listen to me banging on my keyboard anymore. Uh, I need to connect to a Mac Hold up for three seconds. Oh, I need to turn it on. Turning it on. Good idea. There we go. Okay, uh, now I want to connect, oops, Bluetooth. This is totally worth it, I promise you. There we go. Bear. Uh, press that button, and then press that button, and hit enter. Done. Okay, now it's not going to be so loud. So uh, the first thing I'll do is I'll uh, initialize a npm repo. That's just uh, npm init just creates a basic package JSON. You can see that here it's made. Um, and then the next thing I'll install all my dependencies, save dev. I'm going to install ESLint for sure. Then I will install WebDriver IO as well. Let those run. And while that's running, I'll talk about ESLint a little bit. Um, the way it works is you're going to create an ESLint file that's going to have all of your configurations in it. And what this will do is um, it'll have some definitions and stuff in it. And so it's going to check for things like if you have semicolons in your script or not. So if you want semicolons in your script all the time or you don't want semicolons in your script all the time, then you can... Um, you can do that. Do, 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 do. Sorry, I, I distract myself so easily. So, what did I do? Okay. Um, yeah, so you can define whether you should always have semicolons or not because uh, in JavaScript by default it doesn't really care. And so uh, some people prefer it, some people don't. Some people don't care, but. Uh, that's that. So I'm going to open up this package file, my package JSON file, and then I'm going to come in here and create a, um, well, first I'll change test to WebDriver IO. This is going to run the WebDriver IO script that's inside the node modules. So if I go into node modules and then look at the bin folder, you see I've got ESLint in here and then I also have WDIO. Those are just installed. So I can run ESLint um, from node modules slash eslint and it's going to run eslint it doesn't find an eslint file so it's kind of doesn't know what to do um, so i could do it that way it's easier if i just type um, npm run lint so here i'll just do eslint uh, dot and that i don't want to um, dot is going to test the current directory i want to test the test directory um, so i actually do lint test because I only want to lint the test. If I had like a source directory, I could do just a plain lint and then um, it would lint the source directory. 
So uh, let's make those two directories. I'll make source and test. Um, and then if I run npm run lint test, It doesn't look my package JSON because I have an extra comma there. Try this again. Okay, so it ran ESLint test. It didn't have any output because there weren't any errors. Um, so next thing we'll do is I'll just write a small little test. Um, actually, let's set up WebDriver IO while we're doing that. So yeah, we'll run it on our local. We'll use Mocha. Yes, install. Uh, they're just inside of tests. Uh, we'll use dot reporter, uh, not sauce. I want to use Linux standalone, and then uh, silent logging. That's fine. Uh, that's fine. Let that run for a minute, and there we go. And then next up is, okay, so we've got that there. Um, I actually want to edit that file because I got the URL wrong. Um, oops. Let's just test webdriver.io. So that's going to be the, the page we'll test. Okay, now I want to create an actual script, so I'll use st. st, if you haven't seen it before it's uh, sublime text it's just an alias that I created I think I did that with uh, alias st is equal to and then the path to my sublime text so that's what I use for that so I'm gonna create a new file called sublime text um, not sublime text call it test dot basic dot JS we're gonna open that up create our describe block um, why don't I have that's interesting Describe, okay. Um, should let's just do ESLint. So what I'm doing right now is just setting up a basic WebDriver I/O script, and then. Um, you know, looking for, uh, I'm just going to add some basic lint or sorry, syntax errors into my script. So if I did something like ver xyz xyx is equal to that, then um, it should throw an error right here because ver is not undefined, is not a thing. Uh, let's double check that. So I'm going to even though we don't have an ESLint file set up, I'm gonna run lint and see if it works. There we go. Uh, something went wrong, it couldn't find an init, uh, init file. So what I'm gonna do is instead um, initialize my file. Sorry, set a, a configuration file. This is just like we did for WebDriver IO, how we created this configuration file. We're gonna do the same thing here. And to do that, I'll do node modules bin ESLint dash dash init. Uh, answer questions, use a popular style guide. Let's use a popular style guide. Um, let's do standard and we'll do it in JavaScript. JavaScript standard is a popular um, ESLint style guide. It's actually just a style guide. And um, it is, there's an implementation of it for ESLint. But yeah, it's just, um, it's just a basic style guide that follows certain rules. So they want to use two spaces for indention, single quotes for all your strings, no unused variables, uh, no semicolons, uh, which is kind of funny because um, there is one other style guide like this that is, um, it's, just the exact same as JavaScript standard style, except it does 
um, semicolons, and so they call it semi-standard, and I think that's hilarious. JavaScript semi-standard. Just such a, a good name to it. Um, yeah, so it's just the standard JavaScript style guide with a uh, semicolon on top of it. Semicolons as part of the rules. Yeah, that's that. Okay, so we've got that installed. Um, now we can check out that ESLint file. So the ESLint file gets uh, created in our uh, main directory, and you can see that here. Let me click that. Um, darn, I didn't switch that. Okay. Um, so here, oh, it's not there because it's a hidden file. Um, ESLint rc.js. That's the new file that was created there. And it's just a basic um, configuration file similar to our package JSON, except it does an export. And um, it's got some plugins to it to say use the standard. So if I run this now, if I run my lint now, it's going to give me a couple errors, I hope, if I set it up correctly. One error, uh, here's that unexpected token XYZ. So it's focusing on XYZ as the token um, on line three, uh, character eight. So if I go back here, uh, it's saying this is unexpected and that's because I misspelled here. So sometimes when you're running this lint, one thing you're gonna have to do is kind of interpret what it's saying the error is. Um, really the error is here that there's no uh, var. So if I run this again, because I have a semicolon here, it's gonna complain about that. Oh yeah, it's complaining about a lot of things, so that's good. So it says that there's uh, extra semicolons and then it also wants a new line at the end of the file. Um, a couple of other things that it checks out. It uh, validates that you don't have any unused variables. So here I defined x, x y, x and didn't actually use it. Um, so it complains about that. And that's really good because if you have like a, a typo in x, y, x here and you wanna say uh, console.log, XYZ, like you meant to type XYZ, but here you messed up like I did and you typed XYX, then um, that is a really good way of catching those type of errors. And that's especially good if you have something like if um, some conditional that doesn't always get run. Um, uh, why can't I do this? Um, if some conditional that is like a, a rare case, then you could have an error in your code and it probably isn't going to uh, be caught in testing because it may not run through that rare case. So uh, the ESLint is still going to find it. ESLint is still going to find the error for you um, because it doesn't care about if statements. It's just kind of ignoring it. So. Uh, what we're going to do is ignore that for now. We can also get rid of these semicolons uh, because that's how the standard is. That's a style thing. That's not an actual syntax thing. So this code works exactly the same here. Um, it's just if for a standard, they want no semi. They prefer no semicolons. So that's just something to keep in mind. Is that uh, ESLint does both uh, style and um, does your syntax validation. Okay, there are some other things that came up here. Uh, describe is not defined and it is not defined. That's because these are globals. So these actually aren't defined. What happens um, in this script, they're not defined. What happens is that when WebDriver IO sets itself up, it hooks in Mocha and Mocha defines these for us. So we need to tell our script or we need to tell ESLint to ignore um, the describe and the it blocks. So we could do that in a couple of ways. I'll show the first way is by defining some globals. And um, you can do that in a couple of different ways. So let's go here. Um, rules. Globals are what we want to define. Um, and I need to remember how specifically to define that. Hey, look, there's something here called uh, Mocha in this environment. And we'll get back to that in just a minute. But the first thing I want to do is go the global route, specifying globals. Okay, here's so we can add this to the top of our file. Global describe 
and it. So it's just saying that these are um, globals that we already know about that the ESLint can kind of ignore happily. So now it's just saying that we've got a new line that we need at the end of the file. So I'll add that in. And then XYZ is assigned but never used. So we could do something like return XYX, sorry, not XYZ. Um, and then this should pass. Extra semicolon. <laughs> so if you couldn't tell, I use semicolons. And uh, that's why I keep adding them accidentally. OK, so now we have a run where everything passed. Um, ESLint doesn't print out any success message. If everything passes, it just um, doesn't report any errors. So keep that in mind. Um, we don't really want to have to define this because it's kind of annoying for um, our um, for Mocha because Mocha is pretty common. So there's a couple of different ways we can do this. Uh, yeah, I'll show that. Um, ESLint env. So that's the environment we're in. And we're going to define this as Mocha. So you saw that in here. Shoot up. ESLint env node Mocha. So we are running this in node and we are running it in Mocha. So we could actually add both of those basically here. And then we'll save it. And this is going to do the same thing. It's going to add those describe and those it globals to our ESLint definition so it shouldn't complain about anything, which it doesn't. Now, if we have multiple tests, having this at the top of all of our files is going to be annoying, so we don't want to do that. So instead, I'm going to take that out. I'm going to go into my ESLint, and then I'm going to um, jump back into here and define it a slightly different way. There we go, like that. and. Mocha is true. So we're saying that um, the environment that ESLint was running in is inside Mocha, and it's uh, true for Node. Now, this is bad because this is our global ESLint file. We actually want to create a sub file that, um, because this is going to apply to our source folder and our test folder, but we only want it to apply to our test folder. So I'm going to create a new file in my test called uh, eslintrc.js. And um, what this is going to do is basically extend off of this main file and then add our Mocha rule to it. That's one of the things that I really like about eslint is that uh, you can extend really easily. So I'm going to extend the um, basic ESLint file, and then I'm going to add my Mocha environment here. And so um, if I set this up correctly, it should work. Let's run it again. No plugins. I think that's just a, yeah, I was missing a comma there. I need ESLint for my ESLint files. OK, so it ran. Um, if I go into my source directory, I can test this out. I'll just create a fake JavaScript file. And then in here, I will just copy over uh, the same thing. And then if I just run npm run lint, it's going to throw errors because describe is not defined and it is not defined. So yeah, we have two directories here. Um, we have our source directory and our test directory. Inside of, uh, in our source, or sorry, when we run lint on our source directory, it doesn't find an eslint file in there. So it looks up to the parent directory and finds an eslint file here and uses that for its lint validation. Test, on the other hand, does find an eslint file. Uh, so if I ls test. Um, it finds ESLint RS, rc.js here. And so uh, it uses that definition um, instead because we're running it on the test directory. If we go back to our package JSON, you see it's running it on the test directory. So it looks inside of there for that ESLint file. Um, that ESLint file extends the base ESLint file. So again, this is inside of our test folder. 
we have to go up a folder to extend off of that uh, ESLint file. And then it adds a couple of overrides in here. Uh, one of them is saying that the environment is Mocha. And um, that is what defines our describe and it block. Okay, so that's pretty good. Um, I'll get rid of that and I'll do browser.url. Go to abate, just go to the, the base page. So let's run this through our lint and it's gonna throw an error. Um, oops, I need to run the correct one. My test. Okay, it's gonna throw an error because browser is not defined. So this is the same thing that we ran into with uh, describe and it that uh, browser is not defined. So we can do a couple things. Um, I'll just go into my ESLint file for my test and define some globals as um, browser true. Actually, I'm going to do false. This true or false tells you whether you can override that object or not. So if I wanted to do something, um, close that. If I wanted to do something like browser.url is equal to function, something like that, uh, if I set it to false, it's not going to let me do that because it says uh, that's a global that you shouldn't be messing with. I'm not pressing these keys all the way down. Um, but if I set it to true, then uh, I can override it. And let me double check that uh, environment globals. Yeah, so if they're only to be read, then you set the false flag. So that's kind of what I did here. Oops, uh, I'll go back here. Now I'll save this and clear out of that. Uh, npm test. Oops, nope. npm run lint. That's what I want. Okay, cool. So it ran and it passed because browser is now defined. Um, that's cool. I want to see. I don't know the answer to this. So if there's a uh, ESLint for for uh, WebDriver IO. Yes, man. No, and I don't think there really needs to be. Because, okay, so there isn't um, that I can find through a quick search. I could be wrong. But um, that's fine because I, I don't think it really needs to be one, it's just a simple definition. Um, it's just setting browser to false. There's not much else to WebDriver IO that's different from uh, just regular Mocha. So if I go back here and I do Mocha ESLint, you see there's a plugin for Mocha, and this just adds some rules um, that make it pretty nice. And let's see, so this has its own ESLint file rules. Yeah, so it's got a lot of stuff in here. That's cool. Um, yeah, so these are ESLint rules that get added to um, our ESLint execution. Pretty cool. Uh, let me see index.js. OK, so yeah, here are all the rules that get added. Um, this is basically an ESLint RC file, just like we did. Um, and then I wonder where they add the um, globals to this. The uh, the um, the uh, what am I thinking? Where they add uh, describe an it. I don't know where that is, but. But it's cool. Look, there's like uh, no identical title, so it would kind of freak out if you had the same test. So if I like doubled this test and had the same, it would freak out about that because it's an identical title. So if I actually run this, I should get an error. I don't. Why don't I get an error? I lied. 
Hmm. Oh, you know why? Um, am I not using that correctly? ESLint plugin, Mocha. Maybe, maybe I'm talking about two different things. Plugins. Okay, so I actually have to add the Mocha plugin. There must be run ESLint as Mocha test ESLint plugin. Yeah, I got this all wrong. So there is a um, Mocha environment. So I'll, I want to go to the GitHub and check and see where that is. Uh, in library, there's going to be environments. I'll just search for Mocha. Globals.mocha. Okay, so it's just importing um, the Mocha globals, and that's it. Yeah. So it's defining all these environments, and it's saying if uh, Mocha is defined, then import the Mocha globals, which are inside of globals. So if I come here to configuration, and then I check out, where's globals? Wonder where it's pulling globals from. <laughs> hmm. So anyway, it's pulling those globals in from somewhere. I don't want to spend too much time on that. Um, and so what I was saying about this being the, the way that it does the globals, I was completely wrong. And that's why there weren't any globals inside of this code. So I actually do want to add that, though, to our test. So I'm going to install that plugin. And then the next thing I'll do is add this to my ESLint rules. So this is kind of an extra thing um, that we can add. So plugins, Mocha, um, and this is going to add all of those other rules that we were looking at. Oh, man. OK, so if I go back in here, it installed, and I run test now, it should break. It didn't break. What is going on? Um, Excellent plugin mocha. I've got it defined here. I was just testing to see if that worked. Plugins mocha. Then add a reference to this plugin and selected rules in your ESLint config. I wonder if it doesn't have any rules to begin with. Uh, or basically, it doesn't set up any rules to begin with. So these are all the rules. And it may just not define them. So let's check it out. So I've got my rules. Um, again, this is an ESLint format. And I'll say no identical title. And I will set it to two. Um, there's three values. You could do zero, which ignores it. Uh, one, which gives you a warning. And two, which gives you an error on those things. So I'll go and try and run this and see if I can get it to fail. There we go. Oh, man. So it looks like it's not loading that plugin for some reason. Plugins Mocha. That's where all the rules are. 
I installed this. Oh, Mocha slash. Okay. There we go. So because it's inside of a plugin, um, we need to, it's kind of namespaced. And that's good because there could be multiple no identical title rules and uh, they could mean different things. There we go. Okay. So I did have to define it. No identical title there. And now I've got another rule in here for uh, my syntax. So um, that's pretty nice because it's Mocha specific. And uh, if you're using Jasmine, there's Jasmine stuff in there as well and um, all that jazz. So I think the last thing I want to do is show how, we, um, you know, we have to run this every time and that's kind of annoying to have to go in there and run it every time. So instead I want it to throw an error in here if um, there's a, an ESLint error. And this is kind of tricky to get set up, but I want to try it out. So I'm going to package manager or package control is a sublime text thing. I'm only going to show this for sublime text. Um, I want ESLint, ESLint, any JavaScript file. Uh, that's a formatter, autofix, sublime. Okay, so sublime linter is a linter that will do, um, that will basically run any type of linting in uh, sublime text. So I'm going to actually. Okay, before this plugin, I have to do some things. So there's Sublime Linter, then there's Sublime Linter ESLint. Um, Sublime Linter ESLint sits on top of Sublime Linter. Uh, Sublime Linter is a really cool uh, package for Sublime Text 3 that um, lets you do all sorts of lint um, types. So if you do like Python or, or Ruby, you can lint those languages as well. Um, and then it's also got some neat extras to it. So we've got an ESLint linter. Uh, Sublime linter must be installed. I think I already have it installed. And then I need to install ESLint globally because that's where it's going to look. And that's where it gets kind of tricky is um, if you have kind of a Node install, a Node.js install that isn't where Sublime Text is looking, um, it's not going to know what to do. So let me go view my console. Let's see. I should be able to run node. Maybe not. Hmm. Um, ah. Init, install ESLint, init. That's fine. Do not load the NVM plugin. Really? Uh, jump to here. Sublime linter. Okay, so there's sublime linter, uh, toggle linter. No lint error, so it's not actually. I may have to close this and then open it back up. And I'm there, we go. Okay, hey, so we've got our little error shown here. Blah blah blah. Uh, if you mouse over it, it should pop up. Package control messages. Uh, it didn't pop up there, but you can see down here at the bottom, test type title is used multiple times in the same test suite. And then here it uh, says that you've got a new line required. So if I do that and then I change this, um, my errors go away. Uh, same thing if I do like a semicolon, it's going to highlight that for me. So what's really nice about this is you don't have to switch back and forth between the console to do your linting. Um, it's basically all within your editor. So if you are using Sublime Text, I, I highly recommend you do Sublime Linter. If you're using something like Atom or uh, whatever the other ones out there are, they also have, they probably also have their own Linter built in. So that's that. Um, I don't think there's anything else I really want to show. Um, I will 
just um, yeah, create a Git repo and put all this stuff in it. And if you want to take a look at it, you can go for it. Um, and then uh, I'm just trying to think if there is any reason why you would want a WebDriver IO um, plugin because uh, when I saw these rules, it made me think that WebDriver IO probably has some um, special cases that could be useful. So uh, I'm trying to think like, uh, I don't know, what, what, what does it do? Maybe um, in your test, it would check that you're not using done because you need to return the browser object if you're doing the async mode. If you're doing sync mode, maybe it checks that you don't return anything, um, things like that. So it could be useful. But uh, for the most part, all you're doing for your linting in WebDriver IO is adding Mocha, your Mocha styles, or if you're using Jasmine, using that as well. And then the only other thing is um, adding browser uh, to your globals. So that's it. Um, thanks everybody for watching. Uh, I'm going to try and get that sound working if I didn't get it working. Um, I'm guessing you couldn't hear it, but um, yeah, that's that. And then um, that is ESLint, totally awesome tool, and it's got some really cool uh, abilities to it, including um, the ability for you to write your own standard if you want. Um, just like completely your own for your company. If your company has some specific way to write, um, check that out. And it's pretty awesome. So what am I going to do? Yeah, that's that. And um, I don't think I have anything else. Uh, have a great week.